Hey, what's going on, everybody? So I'm going to continue reading John named their secret visions on where I left off and my battery's about to die. So great. Let me see. How could I be afraid with so many people living and dead helping me? One thing still worried me. I wanted to become a medicine man, a Uefi, a healer carrying <clears throat> me unplug this. <clears throat> that don't need to be plugged in. A healer carrying on ancient ways of a Sioux nation. But you cannot learn to be a medicine man like a white man going to medical school. An old holy man can reach you. An old holy man can teach you about herbs and the right way to perform a ceremony where everything must be in its proper place. Where every move, every word has its own special meanings. These things can learn like spelling, like training a horse but by themselves these things mean nothing without the vision and the power this learning will do no good it would not make me a medicine man what if i failed if i had no vision or if i had dreamed of the thunder beings or lightning struck the hill that would make me once into a hioka a contrary wise, upside down man, a clown. You know it. If you get the power my Uncle Chess had told me, if you are not given it, you won't lie about it. You won't pretend that would kill you or kill somebody close to you, somebody you love. Night was coming on. I was still lightheaded and dizzy from my first sweat bath in which I had purified myself before going up on the hill. I had never been in a sweat lodge before. I had sat in the middle. I had sat in the little beehive shaped hut made of bent willow branches and covered with blankets to keep the heat in. Old chest three other medicine men had been in the lodge with me. I had my back against the wall, edging as far as I could from the red hot stones glowing in the center. As chest poured water over the rocks, hissing white steam enveloped me, filled my lungs. I thought the heat would kill me, burn, my, burn the eyelids off my face. But right in the middle of this swirling steam, I heard chest singing. So it couldn't be all that bad. I did not cry out. All my relatives, which would have made him open the flap of the sweat lodge to let some cool air in. And I was proud of this. I had him praying for me. Oh, holy rocks, we receive your white breath, the steam, it is the breath of life. Let this young boy inhale it, make him strong. The sweat bath had prepared me for my vision seeking. Even now, an hour later, my skin still tingled, but it seemed to have made my brains empty. Maybe that was good. Plenty of room for in new insights. Darkness had fallen upon the hill. I knew Himbletchawi had risen. The night sun, which is what we call the moon, huddled in my narrow cave. I did not see it. Blackness was wrapped around me like a velvet cloth. It seemed to cut me off from the outside world even from my own body. It made me listen to the voices within. I thought 
of my forefathers who had crouched on this hill before me. Because the medicine men in my family had chosen this spot for a place of meditation and vision seeking, ever since the day they had crossed the Missouri River to hunt, for buffalo in the White River country some 200 years ago. I thought that I could sense their presence right through the earth I was leaning against. I could feel them entering my body, feel them stirring in my mind and my heart. Chapter 2 That gun in New York Museum belongs to me. I'll continue with this chapter two as soon as I get my battery charged up because right now I'm at 2% so it's about to die. But yeah, I'll upload this video now and then within the next hour I'll continue with chapter two. Dokcha.